Give me a second. Give me a second. No, no, no. No. You thought you would get away from me this time, didn't you? A little... Baby, no food, no water, just pure cum. <laughs> All right, Boogie. Boogie finally let me hit, so I got some, some new inner energy in me. Ain't that right, Boogie? I'm not ready for round two. I'm not ready for round two. Boogie, I'm not ready for round two. I'm not, stop licking your lips. I'm not ready yet. You took it all out of me, Boogie. The <laughs> Look at him, he wants it. Anyways, all right. <laughs> Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that song from Mulan? It said, Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Be a man, you must have the strength of a raging river. Mysterious as the dark side of... The moon. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Can you even read that? I can't even read that, bro. Can y'all read what that says, bro? Barely, bro. I hope this turns out. I can't even read that on that. I can't even read it. Don't look at my jawline. Oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> okay, guys. Welcome to the first step at turning into a profitable trader. Everything that I've been teaching you before this was a lie. Okay? I was lying. I was lying to you. Today we are going to teach you support and resistance. <laughs> I'm Did I get ya? Did I get ya, little, little guy? <sighs> Sometimes I re-watch these YouTube videos and I'm like, what was I on? And let's do it again. Whoa, you can literally see my ass. Whoa, that was serious. <laughs> that was serious. Okay, now we have to start after that. That was absurd. Wow, whale tail arch in the back. All right, so in all seriousness, today is how to pretty much, I, I, I gave you guys like an outline of how you guys should outline your trading plan to make it so... You, you can't fuck up, okay? Like, this is, this is a, 
like a foolproof idiot. You guys proof plan. You just need a pencil and a paper. Okay. So pull it out. All right. And we'll jump right in. Okay. So this is going to be your trading plan mock-up. Okay. And we're just going to go through the steps together. And as I'm asking these questions, you're literally going to write down like, you know, like, oh, I have to add one. I knew I was missing something. Okay, now we're done. Okay, so this is the this is the mock-up of kind of you know like what I'm what I'm expecting you guys to make your your little thing look like. Your trading plan. Okay, so the first thing you want to start with is obviously risk management. That's one of the most important things for this. Okay, so First, we want to pre-designate our risk so we know what we are risking every single day. We know exactly how much we're losing. We know exactly how much, like, we know exactly how much we're going to lose. So when we lose it, we're not crying like a little baby, like all of you guys, you know, breaking your shit and screaming to your mommy. Okay, we're done with that. All right, what is our pre-designated risk? Are you going to use a set lot size? And I can, and I'll make a video on this later. Okay, we're just going, and again, like the, you guys shouldn't necessarily be like trading yet because we haven't even gone over strategy and how to put everything together. Okay, yes, maybe some of you guys like have watched my stuff before and you guys will understand this, but for the, pe the people that started at the baseline, are you going to want to use a set lot size so you don't have to calculate it every single time? That's what I use. I use multiple set lot sizes based on how, how, how like my risk allocation for the day. So there's like high risk, regular risk, and low risk. I have three set lot sizes that I kind of cycle between that I determine on, you know, like what I'm using for the day. And that'll be a whole separate video. Maybe that'll be the next psychology days video. Okay. Or are you going to use a calculated lot size? Meaning you're literally going on a lot size calculator, typing in your account balance, typing in the percent that you want to risk, typing in your PIP, your stop loss in PIPs, and then it spits out a lot size and then you enter that into your MetaTrader and you enter. That's what most people do. And that just takes a little bit too much time for me. And, I, and I've gotten really good at guesstimating what my lot size should be based off of how my stop loss looks. A lot of you guys should use a calcul calculated lot size. A lot of you guys shouldn't use a predetermined lot size because you, you won't know what you're risking. What else do we have to do to pre-designate our risk? So we got the lot size down. We know the monetary value. And then also how many trades are you taking? I recommend one trade a day. That's what I do, one trade a day. Sometimes I'll take two, but when I take two, I also understand my risk. I usually know that I'm willing to take two that day and I de-risk on both those trades so it pretty much equals out to the, to the risk of one trade. I'm only willing to risk so much money for one day. I know the amount of money that I'm willing to risk for each day and if I'm taking two trades, those two trades will add up to that risk for the day. If I'm taking one trade, that one trade will add up to that risk for the day. So I know what I'm risking day in and day out. And you guys need to do the same. Okay, so write down, what loss are you going to calculate your loss size every single time? What are you risking every single day? What is the monetary value that you're willing to risk every single day? How many trades are you taking a day? And this isn't to say, don't say five trades because you're going to lose all fucking four of them and, loot and win one. Okay, I would say one to two trades a day that are high probability quality setups. Okay, moving forward, right? So figure out, are you going to calculate your lot size? If so, what are you risking every single day? How many trades you're taking? Write that down. That is the first thing in your training plan. I am risking $100 a day while taking one, one trade. Don't, don't say one to two. I can say one to two because I actually have my emotions under control. You guys should literally just stick to one for now. I, I, am, I am risking $100 every day while, while taking one trade a day. Period. Move on. And make sure this shit is out in front of you while you get ready to start trading every single day. Moving forward. When are you trading? Identify the times that you are trading. And I don't want to hear... Um, I kind of just trade when I, in my free time, 
idiot. You think professional traders can just sit at their damn computer like you guys do all fucking day and trade? Bro, I come into these markets, murder it for the first hour and a half, and then leave. I designate my trading times because guess what? That's how a job works. No one, no one that is a professional at this says, um, yeah, like sometimes I do Asian session, New York and London session. Other times, like, bro, they have designated times that they trade. I trade New York Stock Exchange open. Some, that's the AM session. Some people trade New York Stock Exchange PM session. Some people trade Asian session. Terrible session to trade if you ask me. Some people trade London session open. Some people trade London session closed going into New York Stock Exchange open. Understand what works for your time zone, what works for your sleep schedule, what works for your work schedule and treat this like a fucking job. Designate your time. What session are you trading? Once you figure that out, once you understand what session you're trading, so for me, it's New York Stock Exchange Open. I take a trade within the first hour and a half of New York Stock Exchange, and if I can't find a trade, I'm not taking it. That doesn't mean I close my trade after the first hour and a half of the session. That just means I have to be within, I have to be in a trade or else I'm done. Okay? When are you trading? After news or on news at all? Are you the type of person that, that likes trading on news? Not CPI, not NF, NFP, not FOMC, not PPI, not the high impact news, not the news that fucks up the market. We're talking about just like the regular red or orange folder news that you read the bias on, figure it out, and if it plays into your bias, you can take a trade. Or do you wanna just be a super probable and high profitability trader and not trade on high impact news at all? Maybe you're still learning and you just want to completely avoid news altogether. That will get keep your win rate very high. When you're starting, that will give you an, an insane win rate. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Because you're a little fucking addict to trading. Stop that. This is, to, this is to stop that. This is to turn this into a hobby, into a profession. I wasn't fucking lying when the, like, I, I technically wasn't lying when I said like, this is like the first fucking like, get you into shape fucking vid. Okay, so when are you trading? You know what session you're trading. Know what time frame you know what time you're going to be trading. Are you going to be trading after news or on news at all? Write it down. If news fucks fucks up the market, I'm done for the day. If news causes literally draw it out to like the pip. If news causes like a five or if news causes like a five point spike within five within a five minute candle on news and also this is just like me saying this randomly okay you determine this yourself because i don't even know okay so if news causes like a, a, a you know five point spike within five minutes are you going to be willing to trade that day or are you going to opt out write that down we want to limit extra trades we want to limit extra risk we want to limit low probability and that's what a trading plan does we get to the point where this is robotic day in, day out. This is how we become emotionless. Moving forward, what are you trading? Are you trading the S&P 500? Are you trading NASDAQ? Are you trading US 30? Are you trading a Forex pair? Are you trading commodities? Are you trading crypto? Write down what you are trading. Most of you guys should only be sticking to one pair. Whether you want to stick to just the S&P 500, whether you really just like trading GJ, whether you really just like trading gold. I'm sick and fucking tired of seeing little fucking kids in my Discord trying to trade 10 pairs at a fucking time when they can't even master fucking one of them. You are unprofitable and you're trying to trade 10 fucking pairs? These are 10 different marketplaces. You're trading the S&P 500, which, which is a fucking US index. You're trading gold, which is a commodity, a fucking precious metal. And then you're also trying to trade Bitcoin during Asian session over the weekend. Are you stupid, bruh? Choose one and leave it at that. And once you turn profitable with that one, add another. Because anything on top of one, you're adding lower probability, you're adding risk, and you're adding fucking hardship to your trade. Trust me, bro, I've been through this shit. I've been through it already. What are you trading? Write it down.
So that, and then, and then once you write it down, delete your whole fucking watch list full of 30 Forex pairs, full of the fucking Mexican peso against the fucking Indian rupee, bruh. <laughs> Some of y'all love that shit. Delete it. Choose one and master it. Because the, all these markets move differently. Once you get a good feel for a pair, you wonder why, you wonder why I trade the s and you wonder why I trade gold, you wonder why I trade the pound versus the yen, and you wonder why I trade GU. I've been trading GU for five fucking years. I've been trading GJ for four fucking years. I've been trading gold for three years, and I've been trading the S&P for four years. I have years of experience with all of these. Before that, I was only, only trading, where is this? Why isn't it letting me click? Before all that shit, I was only trading GJ. Before I even before I even was doing the S and P, I was only doing GJ. Before that, when I was unprofitable, I was trading gold and I was trading GBP USD together. Now I look at them because I'm a fucking good trader, and guess what? I can win off them. But when did I add them? Once I turned profitable with just GBP JPY. Choose one pair and stick to it. Understand it, and it will increase your probability within the market. Perfect. Now that we all got all that shit down, we know what our risk is. We know when we're going to trade. We know what we're going to trade. Now, how the fuck do we trade? How the fuck do we enter? Here we are. What are our confluences? All the building blocks, and this is going to be difficult for us to write down right now when we start doing putting it all together. And we're going to have another one of these spreadsheets for, for tomorrow's video uh, when we do the putting it all together series type thing. Okay, when we, when we put that there, okay, I want you to figure out what confluences you want to use. And this may make, take time, this may take back testing, this may take, you know, like maybe you test out liquidity sweep break of structure as one confluence for like two weeks. You see, okay, write down your win rate, write, write down like how, how it felt, where you like write down your emotions for it. Journal, 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 journal. Are you going to take a trade off liquidity sweep, break of structure, and then a fair value gap or, or order block entry? Maybe you want to wait for extra confirmation. Maybe you know that this works better for you because you can get a better risk to reward. That's what most people do. Most of the time, I want this to happen unless I get a good risk to reward off of just the liquidity sweep and break of structure. Are you going to be super probable? Are you going to be super risk adverse? And are you going to wait? And are you going to take a trade that is only aligned with your daily bias, that has a liquidity sweep with your daily bias, that has a break of structure all aligned with that daily bias, that's all aligned with the overall trend of the market because you know that's going to be high probability because that's where the market wants to go. Me personally, if I'm you, that's what I'm doing. I know... The S&P, what are we right now? On the daily, we're bullish. What are we looking for? We're looking for buys. If we can't find buys within the market off a of liquidity suite, break of structure, fair value gap, order, order block entry, we're not taking the trade. If it's not during New York Stock Exchange Open within that first hour and a half, we're not taking the trade. If it's not on the S&P 500, we're not taking the trade. If I don't know what my, what my set fucking pre-designated risk is, right, right when I wake up, right when I get ready to trade, I'm not taking a trade until I figure that shit out. And then at the end of it, you know what you're risking, you know when you're trading, you know what you're trading, and you know exactly how to enter, and you have that step-by-step -step plan, and the, the rest is just press the damn button and you did it that's how you take a trade you follow every single fucking step in your trading plan to the point where you are a fucking robot where you don't enter off anything else you don't enter off of you know you don't enter off of oh FOMO I think it's going to go higher because of this 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 shut up does it follow your trading plan if no, leave. If you already took your trade for the day, leave. If you already maxed out your pre-designated risk for the day, leave. If it's a U.S. fucking bank holiday and you can't trade the S&P 500 and that's the, that's the pair that you trade, 
leave. Stop looking at other Forex pairs. Stop looking at crypto. Stop looking at commodities. If you don't get a liquidity sweep and a break of structure and your fucking, all your confluence is getting hit, don't take a trade. It's literally as simple as that. This dumbs it the fuck down. This is foolproof. It tells you exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And this is what's going to turn you profitable, is understanding this shit. And if you can't understand this, leave. And don't try trading, because you won't make it far if you can't understand this shit. So take a little screenshot of this shit. Maybe paste it in your in your notebook, put it on your phone with like and write out what what all your things are next to these questions. Okay, and on tomorrow's video, we'll talk more about all of these entries on how we can enter. Because before we even get into the chart portion, because I know, I know for a fact on day two of putting everything together on the putting everything together series within this. Y'all are going to be asking, how did you do this? How did you do that? How did you do this? How did you do that? We need day one first. We need to know what our confluences are. We need to know what our building blocks are. We need to know what they're used for. We got to do a recap of all of that because maybe you forgot. Okay. So with that being said, you got your trading plan. You're getting real fucking close to getting this shit and getting real fucking close to Getting to the point where you have your strategy down, you have your trading plan down, hopefully your emotions and your discipline and your mental has been growing throughout all of this. This was your homework today, by the way, just mock writing up your trading plan. You, were, you should have been doing this during the video, or maybe you just wanted to watch the video and then do it afterwards. I don't care. Okay. Got it? Cool. I'll see you boys tomorrow when we start putting everything together, talk about the confluences, talk about the building blocks one more time, talk about what they're used for, talk about how we want to use them, how we can enter within the market, how we can use certain building blocks together to take certain types of trades. It's going to be a lot of information tomorrow and it's going to be a lot of information following with that putting everything together series. So pop a fucking Adderall, fucking snort. Some, I don't, no, I shouldn't say that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Focus up. That's all I meant to say. Drink some water. Drink some Gatorade. <laughs> and strap in, okay? Because we're going to be learning a lot tomorrow and the days following when it comes to the trading portions. That being said, that's all from me. I'll catch you boys tomorrow. Peace out. Stay safe. I'm still in San Diego. I get back real soon. <laughs> All right. Peace.